hey guys so in this video we would be talking about how to set up a new project using easybake so for starters you would need the apdx desktop app installed in your system and along with the desktop app you need to make sure that all of the tools listed inside desktop app have been installed like homebrew node apdx cli easybake these are some of the prerequisites you already need to have installed in your system before you go through further in this video so once you have got every uh, these things installed the next thing you would need is an empty git repository to which you would actually push your code to your your freshly baked project to so i have the best legacy salesforce project so for those of you who do not know about easybake easybake is a homegrown tool by the aperio digital team and in aperio dx we are leveraging it to create new projects to scaffold new projects from pre-existing templates and uh, yeah, e uh, while doing the project setup easybake asks you some questions that you answer and based on your responses it customizes your project as per your needs and pushes it to your git repository so there are two ways through which you could actually create a new project uh, new apdx project first one is through the desktop app so as soon as you open the desktop app you'll see this projects uh, page and here on the right hand side you'll see an add project button so now let's go ahead and see how do we actually create a legacy salesforce project so again this time let's create a new project from the terminal instead of the desktop app so let me run adx in it And I would be choosing Legacy Salesforce this time. Now it is asking me the repository where I want to push it to. So let me choose this one. Done. List. So again, you can see these are some of the questions we also saw in the Salesforce GX one. So these are the common questions which uh, which Easybake is asking us. It is not the template value stored in the legacy Salesforce repository. So again, it has started cloning the legacy Salesforce template repository and I'll let it clone it. Well, so it has finished cloning the repositories. So let's start answering the questions. So these are some of the common questions that all template repositories have. To choose GitLab. Again, we have seen all of these questions in the Salesforce DX repositories, so not explaining them. So this one is a different question. So in Legacy Salesforce world, where we use many repositories and Salesforce GX one. We have review apps for actually doing QA, but in legacy Salesforce world, we would be having a QA sandbox instead of a review app since review apps is a feature we have taken from scratch org, which is a Salesforce DX feature. So the, here you can see there is one more org that is the QA in the options. So based on which one we select, out of these our YML would be configured in such a way that if we select this first option committing on a feature branch would validate your code to the QA branch and if I choose this one then committing on a feature branch would validate your code to SIT branch and so with this like feature committing on a feature branch would deploy uh, validate your code against UAT and committing on a feature branch would deploy a code against production so we have we have covered basically most of the scenarios that any even complex project might use while development so for now let's select the first one that is QA SIT UAT and production if we choose this committing on a feature branch would validate your code against the QA environment then committing to the QA branch would 
deploy your code to the QA org and validate against the SIT environment. Moving upwards, uh, committing your code on the SIT branch would actually deploy it to SIT and validate against UAT branch. Uh, UAT org and finally committing on master would deploy your code to production uh, deploy your code to UAT and also uh, Validate on production as well. So how do you actually deploy to production then? So to for deploying to production you'll have to pass in tags You'll have to create tags on the commit that you want to deploy to production on master so they are in the format of V hyphen 1.0.x so whichever version depending upon you want to deploy to production so you'll have to create these tags and push them to the GitLab repo and once you do that then a manager would be scheduled to deploy to production I know it sounds a little bit tough but it really isn't and you start to get it uh, and you start getting a hang of it as soon as you uh, doing the uh, as, soon, as soon as you start doing these things in a project on a daily basis. So let's select this one for now So now it is asking us that which branch do we actually want feature branches being created from so this 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 is a question imp uh, this is an important question because while you are developing everyone is committing on the QA branch if your sprint is ongoing you create a feature branch from QA and commit your code back to QA so QA is supposed to have the latest code base and you only commit to master like when your SIT testing has been done and your code is ready to be pushed at UAT. So if you create a feature branch from the master branch, then you might not always have the latest code base to work on, which is not very nice. So it is recommended that you select QA here. Then now it is asking us for the credentials of the orgs that we have that we have specified so some 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 orgs and most of the orgs use custom domain as well so if you want to specify that you could specify it in here so let's choose the default for now and now it is asking me for the username of the qa org so let me type in qa username and now the password along with security token qa password then this is for UAT. Let's just skip these SIT and finally for production. So again, you can see swapping of the variables has been done, and after that, icing steps have been started. So even the icing steps differ quite a lot based on which type of template repository you chose. So here you can see like we are adding some git tags which are helpful in uh, deployment. So we did not have them and while we were developing for Salesforce DX. And again the CI secret is being run. Storing of personal token, create generation of sonar files. And finally, we can see that our project icing has been applied and our project is ready to work on. So again, let's hop over onto GitLab and see if our code has been pushed over there. So this is GitLab. Let me reload the tab. And voila. Here it is. So you can see, you can clearly see a different set of files than we than than we had than what we had in the Salesforce DX one. There is clearly a differentiation. So yes, it is a legacy Salesforce type of project. And let's again again go into the CI/CD variables and actually check if they have any kind of uh, or if the username and credentials have been passed over here. So here you can see there are a lot many environment variables than we actually had in the Salesforce ZX project, but uh, these are all useful as you can see 
most of them are the credentials apart from them there are environment variables like deployment should be enabled or not and the gitlab username gitlab token these are the common ones then the test suits the test level and of course the sonar login so again the these these uh, the ci continuous integration has also been enabled since the uh, oml file has been pushed so if i go into the pipelines i would be able to see that the pipelines have started and indeed yes the pipelines have succeeded with three jobs sonar job or deploy to uat job and validation against production job and all of them have been successful so you can straight away put your code inside this repository and start deploying so that's it for this video guys uh, hope you learned something thank you